Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. You who go down to the sea. You who live in the islands. Oh, if you live in the city, lift your voice and sing out. Sing out, glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise to the ends of the earth. Let every nation tell it, declare it, till every man is heard. Say out glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Nani Nani Yehova. No Kanani Yehova. Nani Nani Yehova. Te Yaku Amanaloa. Vikia Vikia Letua. Matote Via Oletua. Vikia, vikia, letua, o, o, letu, mata, utia. chilly morning from Sherman, Texas, although it's not quite as chilly as it has been the last several mornings. I believe today our high will be above freezing for the first time in several days and tomorrow will be even warmer and then toward the weekend we have some more stuff coming in. But that's just the way we are. Now, this is the last of three, uh, I guess you could call uh, timeout lessons as we've had kind of called a three lesson timeout in our study of the Psalms. And uh, <clears throat> we'll be back to that next week. But remember, remember some things. Uh, next week, I want to initiate a Zoom meeting with all of you. And so initiating that meeting, I want to make sure we all understand how that's going to, how that's going to work. So you have to know a couple of things uh, when you come in to the bring up Zoom next week. So I'll remind you of a couple of things here. Number one, you have to know the meeting ID. And there is the meeting ID right there, 892-3926-5672. So you'll enter that into the little box, the little blank that that asks for the meeting ID. And then, and then once you, once you do that, you will have to then have the login ID. And the login ID is 845376. And once you do that, that will put you in what I call a waiting area where I will approve you or whatever you want to call it to bring you into the meeting and then your picture from your camera uh, will put your picture on the big black screen that's there unless I choose some other screen but right now that's what I plan on doing and you'll be added one by one to the meeting so I don't know how many are gonna are gonna be able to do this or not but we'll just see how it goes 
and we will be in Psalm 89. And so that's the first book, the first Psalm in the next book of the book of Psalms, book four, and you know there's five books of Psalms. And so that's where we'll be next week. My ultimate goal is, is to let us have a discussion among ourselves about the particular psalm that we're studying each week. And we'll, we'll talk more about that next week. So that's what we're looking forward to next week. But for this week, this being the last, uh, the last of the little free lesson departure from the psalm, then we want to we want to talk about what the opening slide said, and that was being surprised at God, or being surprised by God. And did you know our God was God of surprises? Last year, for 2023, our church had a very familiar verse as our theme verse, and it's Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Now, I'm going to be reading out of the out of the ESV. It says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Might want to come back to this in just a moment. But our theme for last year was more than he, more than we can imagine. And that's what Paul says here to the Ephesian brothers and sisters, that that God can do more than we ask or imagine. And I don't know about you, but I can ask for a lot. And I think my imagination run cra runs crazy sometimes in what I can imagine. Yours probably too. And God can do more than that. And that kind of speaks to the lesson today or the thoughts today on you know letting God surprise you letting God surprise you this verse is very similar to one that we find in the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah uh, chapter 55 <clears throat> excuse me and it's verse it's verse 8 and once again a very familiar verse where the prophet records, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And then it goes on to say, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This passage starts at first by saying in verse 6, Seek the Lord. While he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord. So it all starts with, with the admonition or the exhortation or maybe even the warning to turn to God if you're not. Why? Because my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. The Living New Testament uh, kind of translates or interprets, you might say, verse 8 this way, where my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are beyond anything that you can imagine. Which is similar to what we just read in Ephesians chapter 3. And so it seems to be saying that, yes, that you need to be ready to be surprised by God and what he, what he is capable of doing and what he will do. What he will do. And I might point out that both of these passages anticipate our involvement with God. The Ephesians 3 passage says, as he is at work in us. And here, it's, here the, the people are being called on the Lord to come near to God while he, while he can be found. And so we have to have a close relationship with God and, and then allow him to work and do more than we can imagine. That we'll be surprised, we'll be surprised at what he can and does do. So that's going to lead me just to 
just to talk about, I guess I would say, just a, a few people in the Bible who were surprised, <laughs> were surprised at what, what God did. Now we all know this story, Zacchaeus, right? We know the song, Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man, okay? And, and this story opens for us there in Luke and, and we find that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. That's all he wanted. And in order to see Jesus, Zacchaeus had to climb up in a tree because he was short and he wouldn't been able to see over the crowd. Now this is, maybe there's two things that we need to think about here. And number one is, what did Zacchaeus do for a living? Well, he was a tax collector. And you've studied enough Bible to know, or you've heard it and said it often enough, those were not <laughs> among the favored of the people, the tax collector. Matter of fact, they, they really were considered to be somewhat in cahoots with the government, with the Roman government, because that's why they were collecting taxes. And it seems that some of them would maybe scrape some off the top for their own good or charge more than they were supposed to, and they would take the excess themselves. And so we see a couple of things here. Number one, we see Zacchaeus wanting to see Jesus so badly that he climbs a tree, but it also is because he wouldn't probably have been allowed to stand among the crowd. As soon as they would have seen Zacchaeus in the crowd, they would have either moved away from him or pushed him away because he was a tax collector. But all Zacchaeus wanted to say, I wanted to see, was Jesus. The surprise was that Jesus saw him. You catch that? All Zacchaeus wanted to do was see Jesus. The surprise was Jesus saw him. And not only did he see him, not only did he see him, but he said, I'm going to your house. Now, Zacchaeus didn't offer an invitation there, if I'm reading that right. Jesus just said, I'm going to your house today. Surprise number two. And so Jesus and Zacchaeus go to Zacchaeus' house and now Dr. Luke disappoints me because I want to know, word for word, so to speak, thought for thought, what they talked about in that house because of what Zacchaeus says and that he's going to return se several times over what he has stolen from people and collecting money in the name of taxes. And he's, in essence, repenting, and Jesus says, well, wow, salvation has come into this house. Surprise number four. So you see what what happens here with Jesus is Zacchaeus gets more than what he was wanting. He was just wanting to see Jesus. He knew he couldn't stand among the crowd. They wouldn't have that. So he climbs a sycamore tree because he is a short man to see Jesus and Jesus sees him. Did he get more than he could ask or imagine? Did he, did he discover uh, thoughts and ways that were beyond what he was thinking and what he could do? Yes, he did. Indeed, he was surprised at what God was doing. Let's take a look at another one. Let's look at the Apostle Paul. Now you gotta admit he must have been surprised. The first time we're introduced to Paul, he is Saul, and he is holding the clothes of people who were stoning Stephen to death. And he is taking Christians, disciples of Jesus Christ, because they acknowledge Jesus as Lord, he's taking them off to Rome, to the government, to be either imprisoned or maybe even killed because they will not acknowledge that Caesar is Lord. This is Saul. This is what he's doing. And he just anticipated doing this probably for the rest of his life until maybe the church of Jesus Christ was no more. 
And did he ever get a surprise? On the road to Damascus, this bright light shines and this voice says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he says, well, who are you, Lord, that I may know? And, and he tells him, he says, right now, he says, I'm, I'm the one you're persecuting. I'm Jesus. I'm Christ. I'm the one you're persecuting. And there is the beginning of a conversion right there that happens later when he goes into the city and is baptized. Now, you talk about a surprise. You know, Paul was, was, was not a faithful follower of Jesus Christ at all. There were a lot of those. As the church was brand new. There were a lot of those. He was working against Jesus Christ. He thought, he thought that he was being obedient and faithful to the Torah, to the law of Moses. And these Christians were, were, were saying that Jesus was the, was the Messiah and the Jews said, no, he's not because the Messiah is going to walk into Jerusalem, kick out the Romans, take a seat on the throne of David and reign. So Paul had all that worked out, but wasn't this a surprise for him? He was blinded by the light and he received Jesus Christ. What a surprise. Then let's do another one. And again, it's, it's from a, a very common account in the Old Testament, King David. David called a man after God's own heart. Would that describe you and me if I can get off topic just a little bit? A man after God's own heart. But we find that even, even with that description that, that David had some temptations and things that he had to fight. And we could talk about how, how difficult it was for David to even become king. He was anointed three times. But as king, he sees Bathsheba and begins to lust after her. And when he calls for her to come to the palace, she can't refuse. This is the king calling. And then you know what happens. He commits adultery. Having realized what he has done, he tries to get Bathsheba's husband to come back home and live with her and, and supposedly get her pregnant. And of course, Uriah is such a noble guy that he won't, he won't do anything that the soldiers who are fighting can't do. So he won't, he won't live with his wife. He won't take, uh, take comfort at home. He won't do that. And so then David arranges for, this is the man after God's own heart, for Uriah to be taken to the front line. And when the fighting is the worst, the whole army withdraw from him, leave him on the front line by himself. And obviously he'll be killed. Adultery and murder. Adultery and murder for those two reasons, for those two actions, according to the law of Moses, David should have been killed. That should have been the punishment for David. Well, wasn't he surprised? Now, there were repercussions. You know, there were repercussions of, of, for what he did, and that, that, that unfolds for us later in the story. But when the prophet Nathan comes to David, he simply tells him a story about a man who, who had a pet lamb, you might say, and, and a neighbor was going to make a feast for somebody and took his pet lamb instead of taking one of his own and serve it to his guest. And David says, that man ought to die. And Na all Nathan says is, you're the man. You're the man. And David then enters a stage of remorse. And Nathan says, you're not going to die. In other words, you're not going to undergo what the law says should happen. You reckon he was surprised? 
You see this? This is the the kind of living that we should be doing if we call ourselves disciples of Jesus Christ. Things like we we shouldn't be content just with having church. We should be thinking and imagining and praying about what else we can do and God can do more than that. Even in, in our brightest moments, you might say, of, of our thinking, God is so much more than that. You, and you, you even think about the beginning of the church there in the book of Acts. I wonder what the disciples thought. You know, Jesus, Jesus essentially told them before he ascended to heaven, okay, okay, you just wait in Jerusalem and you'll be filled with the Spirit and you do what it tells you. <laughs> and they did. And the church grew. But even in our own lives, what do, we, what do we ask from God beyond the things we need? That is the physical things, to, for God to fix situations in our lives. And we, we need to ask him that. I wonder if we ever pray for more patience. I wonder if we ever pray for more, for more commitment. I wonder if we, if we pray, God, send, send someone into my life that I can share the gospel with. And he can even do more than that. And that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about uh, with, uh, you know, letting God surprise you. You know what happens when something surprises you? First of all, sometimes it makes you afraid. And sometimes it makes you just burst out in laughter and joy. And those are the kind of things that, that we're talking about here. So the challenge is for us in 2024 is to let God surprise you and be looking for the surprises of God. You know, there are things like people who the doctors say will not recover from a particular illness and all of a sudden they do. And that's a surprise and that's God at work. He doesn't do it for all of them, but he's done it for some. Or people find themselves in maybe a financial situation, and they pray and they about it and they, they commit themselves to the Lord and he does more than what they ask. I, that's happened too. But sometimes the surprises that, that God brings are more subtle than that and maybe we have to look for them and see them to, to note that God was at work there. Getting back to the Ephesians 3 passage, there's a power of God that's at work in us. And so sometimes the surprise that maybe God is after or wanting to work is going to come through you and come through me. Maybe doing things we didn't think we would ever be able to do. Maybe we use excuses like, that's not my talent. Or I don't have a heart for that or I don't have time for it but rather opening up our life to say, okay, God, here I am. And how, how am I going to be used today? So let's be willing. Let's be looking for the ways God may surprise us. Well, once again, uh, next week we start with the Zoom meetings. I don't know right now how many are going to find their way into <laughs> into that into the meeting and so let me remind you then once again that the meeting ID is right there remember you have to open the zoom app if you don't have it you need to install it on your computer or device create an account your account and then uh, a week from today, around 9 o'clock, maybe a little early, open it up, log in to the account you created, and then join, click Join Meeting and put that meeting ID in there. That's the meeting that you're going to join. Then after you do the, the uh, click to join that meeting and enter the meeting ID, then you have to put the login. Or it may call it the network password or something like that. And you put in this number. 
that will put you in the waiting room. I'll click on you and that will put you on the screen with everybody else who might be wanting to join. And so that's what we will be doing next week. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, <laughs> to trying this <laughs> and see how it's going to work. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord, may the Lord give you peace. Lord, we give you glory, Lord.